Is sex a good thing? <laughs> and it's early in the morning. Depend. I like that answer. That really fits actually with where I'm going. But in theory, in just a general sense, would you say sex is a good thing? <laughs> I know you shot, yes. <clears throat> yes, because the act of uh, sex is like reproduction, which is technically, you know, in <laughs> legal technical terms, you're looking at, you know, mating, which is, He's you know, a natural thing. <laughs> <laughs> you're looking at natural, natural capacity. I mean, you know, like the cap okay, well, limit. Well, then, what am I in got order to, uh, in summary, Dan, yes or no? In summary, is it good? You already said it is a good thing, right? I have. Yeah. No, it's good. I love this. It's very brave of you to just kind of... You know, have some thoughts. I, I, I admire that. Now, okay, so it's a good thing, reproduction. I mean, it's a big deal. A human race wouldn't go on without, you know, sex. And, you know, it's pleasurable. It's a good deal. Glad it was invented. Thank you. So sex, way up on the chart of good stuff. Would you say it's also a pretty powerful event? Yes. Yes, yes pretty powerful. So here's this thing that's very good, hoorah, but also powerful. What's an example of something else in life that's good but also powerful? And if you misused it, it might do a little bit of damage. Something else that would fit that description. Yes? Money. Money. Great. Is that what you were gonna say? You just like raising your hands. <laughs> I'm with you. It is early. So uh money's a great example. Somebody the other day said chocolate. It's kind of funny, a little too much chocolate, is it? Yes. Power in general, like political power. Yes, I agree. So uh, very uh, good but powerful. I think of a fire, on a cold night, a fire in a fireplace is very warm and beautiful, you know, the crackling wood, it's so nice. But if it gets out of the fireplace, at that juncture, it's not so good. And I think that's what our sex is like, when it's where it belongs in our lives, hoorah, good deal, um, a lot of benefits and pleasure and all. But if it's out of place, look around. You're not little kids. I mean, you, you're transitioning to be young adults. You can look around, you see, there's some people getting hurt. Uh, with this whole sex thing. Would you mind shutting the door? Thank oh, you. Yeah, sure. no. <laughs> Appreciate it. Um, and, uh, and so sex is powerful but good, like a fire. What is the time and place in your lives, thinking like, what's the fireplace for the fire of sex? What's the time and place in your lives traditionally where even your parents would be like, thumbs up now, dude, for sex, yes? When you're married. When you're married. Okay, good. And that, you know, I hear that a lot. Um, and so traditionally the idea was, you know, they fall in love. They get to know each other, they decide, they decide they want to spend their lives together, they commit to each other, they share those vows, put rings on each other's fingers, and on the honeymoon, they have sex. And, you know, so that was and, and is, for you know, a lot of people, what is considered the fireplace for that fire of sex, the safe place. Now, is that um, what the culture is telling you today is the normal thing, though? Is that what no. most people are doing today? No. No. So what... Waiting until marriage, postponing sex until marriage, which is sexual abstinence, postponing sex until marriage, choosing to do that, um, that is countercultural now. So, what does it mean to be countercultural? Yes? To follow. To, to follow or go against? against. Countercultural. Yes, to go against the flow of the culture. So, the culture has a message out there for you as teens, and it's kind of been shoving this message in your face for years and years on a lot of the TV shows, music, movies, etc. The message is, oh, well, you're supposed to date real young, and then when you date, you're supposed to have sex, because that is what the culture says. And so the pressure is on, and some of you have already felt the pressure big time, especially some of you girls have already felt the pressure to be sexually active, to kind of go with the flow. Um, and, uh, and some of you maybe have not felt the pressure so much, but next year, good grief, if you haven't felt it yet, you're going to feel it this summer. Next year, it's going to be way worse next year. A lot of the seniors say um, the pressure, especially for the girls, is at like, probably the worst in freshman year. A lot of the older guys are like seeing you come in and like, oh, the fresh meat has arrived. Not all guys, but a lot of guys are thinking that, like, oh, <laughs> they're so easy. And all I have to do is show them some, you know, acceptance, tell them they're hot and stuff. Yeah, they're going to be easy. And if I get them on it, you know, if I'm the first one, I don't have to worry about a disease and all that stuff. So, I mean, the pressure's on. And you may feel like you're alone. And yet, when, you know, and the reality is in eighth grade, still most people are not sexually active. A small percentage are. It starts to switch in high school to where at the end of high school and college, it becomes real high pressure to be sexually active. Not everybody's doing it telling you. I, um, part of the deal is the people that are having sex are blabbing about it. 
it's a powerful event in life, and a lot of people think, well, this is cool to talk about, and it is the cultural flow. So going with the flow means I'm going to have sex and dating, and I'm going to talk about it. And that's what a lot of people do. But there's a whole lot of people not having sex that just aren't talking about it. Nobody's coming in on a Monday like, dude, I had this awesome experience of non-sexuality. It was just the best abstinence of my whole life. <laughs> Nobody's going to brag on that. Even if the guy in the locker room hasn't had sex, when it gets around to him, dude, did you get some this weekend? He's not going to blab and brag about the fact that he didn't. No. And, and it feels, I mean, you feel the pressure. But I want to say, it's easy to go with the flow. A dead fish can float down a river. It doesn't take a lot to do that. To go against the flow is tough. And you're not alone. I was at Hereford High. Uh, up there in the Hereford zone, way up in the country, and um, speaking to seniors, and I had a college girl named Emily with me, and she was talking about why she had chosen to be abstinent until marriage. And uh, when I got the feedback letters from these seniors, five girls in one class said kind of the same thing. Hey, thanks for bringing Emily to tell her story. I'm doing the same thing, waiting, and yet I kind of feel like I'm alone in this school. There's five girls in one class feeling like they were alone, and they weren't alone. And I'm, I'm talking fast partly because um, these two in the back of the room are both college age. Uh, Julie's not in college right now, and Andrew is. Uh, and and um, both are being abstinent, okay? And I uh, just want to say, they have a lot of friends that are doing the same thing in college. So, um, and hopefully we're going to have a few minutes for them to share, like, right at the end of things. So I'm going to try to move along quickly. So anyway... Um, Yes, so you're not alone if you're doing that. Now, if you've already gone with the flow, I want to just say a few words with that. If you've already been involved with sexual stuff going on in your life now, uh, I'm not shocked at that. In fact, the flow and the pressure is so strong, even at your age group, I'm kind of shocked when I meet people that are not going there. Because it takes a lot more strength to not be sexually active in this culture than it does to be sexually active. So I just, I just say, if you're already there, all of us is sometimes as human beings need to make turnarounds. All of us sometimes realize like, hey, this is not taking me where I wanted to go. And I might need to do a turnaround and kind of get back on track. And that's fine. And some of you may be kind of playing with the fire and haven't been burned yet. Please keep in mind what I'm saying if that's the case, because if you haven't been burned yet, you're like, oh, he doesn't understand, this is a wonderful whatever. No, um, you will get burned. And so it's just a matter of time. But when you do, if you haven't yet, but when you do, know that turnarounds are a good things sometimes in our life. All of us. I've done them in my life in different areas. I won't bore you with the details. But yes, that happens. So anyway, um, now <clears throat> typically when you've got a guest speaker that's going to talk about teen sex and dating and stuff, what consequences would you expect to hear the most about? Like when the fire's out of, out of the fireplace of marriage, what consequences? Do you think I'm going to talk about the most? Burn. Yeah, I mean, but what is that symbolic of? The consequences physically? No. I just said it. Physical consequences. Yes? STDs. STDs and. Come on, girls. Yes? Oh, no, I was going to say STIs. But it's kind of STIs, like STDs. STDs. I'm confused with the difference. But anyway, which is politically correct? STIs? STIs. STIs. Now it is. So I'm going to go on saying STDs just to mess with the political correctness today. Be a little countercultural. Anyway, <laughs> um, pregnancies. Okay, so I'm not talking about STIs or pregnancies uh, because, not that because they're not important, they're hugely important. Um, they can change your life immediately and affect a lot of other lives. So I'm not going to talk about those, not because they're not important. But because this fire of sex, this powerful good thing, is powerful enough that even if you protected yourself physically, like wearing a scuba suit, body gear, condom, um, <laughs> you could still, sex is still powerful enough to affect you in other ways. And it affects you relationally, and that I think is so huge. Again, folks, I mean, you're at the age where you know how important relationships are. You're kind of moving out of, like, family relationships, so I hope you keep them strong, but it's also now you're just like expanding out to more relationships, which is cool. We know they're important. We want to talk about how sex affects relationships and how that fire of sex, when it's out of the fireplace, affects us emotionally. So first relationally, 